sinister stories. The rain poured down relentlessly, creating a curtain of water that obscured the road ahead. Sarah and Mark's car navigated through the storm, the windshield wipers working furiously to keep their vision clear. It was late, and the only thing they wanted was a place to rest for the night. The couple had been driving for hours, with no signs of civilization in sight. As they rounded a bend, the faint glow of lights pierced through the rain, catching their attention. A dilapidated sign loomed ahead, partially obscured by the downpour. Motel, Sarah read aloud. It's the only one we've seen for miles. The parking lot of the old motel was empty, the dim glow of a flickering vacancy sign barely visible through the rain. Mark maneuvered the car into the lot, pulling up to the office. They exchanged glances, their hope dwindling as they noticed the vacancy sign was off, but desperation pushed them to try their luck. The bell above the door tinkled as they entered the office. The musty scent of old books and the sound of rain echoed within. An old man stood behind the counter, his eyes scrutinizing them with an intensity that sent a shiver down Sarah's spine. We're looking for a room for the night, Mark said, trying to keep his voice steady despite the unease he felt. The old man stared at them for a moment before shaking his head. Sorry, we're closed, no guests tonight. Sarah's heart sank, but she wasn't ready to give up. She exchanged a glance with Mark and then opened her purse, revealing a wad of cash. Please, we're desperate. We'll pay you whatever you want. Just give us a room for the night. The old man's expression remained unyielding. No, he said firmly. You can't stay here. Desperation turned to frustration, and Mark's voice grew tense. Look, we'll pay you double, triple even. We just need a place to stay but the old man's eyes held a hint of something darker, a resolve that sent a chill down their spines. I said no, now leave. Defeated, the couple retreated from the office. The rain had only intensified, the sound of the downpour echoing their disappointment. As they drove a short distance down the road, they saw the old man closing up the office and getting into his car. With a sigh, they watched as he drove away, disappearing into the night. With nowhere else to go, the couple's desperation grew. The rain continued to pour, and the darkness outside a seemed to deepen with each passing minute. Finally, Mark parked the car a short distance down the road from the motel, hidden from view. The situation was diary, and their desire for shelter outweighed the risk of breaking into the motel. The door to the room creaked open, revealing a dim and musty space. They turned on the lights and a sense of relief washed over as warmth and dryness enveloped their weary bodies. They settled in, exhaustion slowly lulling them into a restless sleep. But as the deepened, their slumber was disrupted by a sound, a strange, eerie noise coming from the room next door. It was as if someone was moving around, shuffling and knocking things over. Sarah and Mark exchanged puzzled glances, their brows furrowed. What's going on in there? Mark whispered his voice tinged with unease. I don't know, Sarah replied, her heart racing. I thought this place was supposed to be empty. Just as they were about to dismiss the noise as their imagination, a chilling scream pierced the air. Sarah clung to Mark, her breath caught in her throat. Fear twisted in their stomachs as they listened to the anguished cries that seemed to fill the room next door. Should we call the police? Mark asked, his voice trembling. Before Sarah could answer, the screaming abruptly stopped, leaving an eerie silence in its wake. The only sound was the rain against the windows. They stared at each other, dread pooling in their chests. Then a new sound emerged, an unsettling chorus of voices. It was as if a multitude of people were speaking at once, their words a jumbled mess of agony and despair. The voices grew louder, their words indecipherable, yet hauntingly mournful. Sarah clung to Mark, her eyes wide with terror. What's happening, Mark? What is this? He shook his head, his own fear mirrored in his eyes. I don't know, but we need to get out of here. Just as they were about to rush for the door, the voices shifted. The mournful cries transformed into a cacophony of screams, a chorus of torment that seemed to fill the air around them. Sarah's heart pounded in her chest, 
her breathing coming in short, panicked gasps. And then, amidst the chaos, a single voice rang out, a woman's voice, filled with terror and desperation. Why are you killing us? Please let us go. The words echoed through the room, sending chills down their spines. The couple's eyes met, their shared terror uniting them. They knew they needed to leave to escape this nightmare, but fear rooted them in place. Hours passed in agonizing silence. The voices eventually faded, leaving behind an oppressive stillness. With trembling hands, Sarah and Mark packed their belongings, their thoughts consumed by the need to escape. They ventured outside, the rain still falling heavily, but their car wouldn't start. Panic clawed at their chests as they tried repeatedly to start the engine, but it remained stubbornly silent. Defeated, they returned to the motel room, locking the door behind them. Exhaustion and fear weighed heavily on them, but they dared not close their eyes. The hours ticked by slowly and eventually, their tired bodies succumbed to sleep. As they contemplated their next move, the air was suddenly pierced by a voice, a deep, chilling voice that seemed to echo from the very walls. Sorry for the car trouble, but no one leaves this motel. Sarah and Mark's hearts sank as the realization hit them. They were not alone. The malevolent presence that had tormented them throughout the night was still there, still watching, still waiting. The darkness of the room seemed to close in on them, suffocating them with a sense of dread that was impossible to escape. The night stretched on in torturous eternity. Sarah and Mark remained huddled in the dimly lit room, the weight of their situation pressing down on them like a suffocating blanket. The words of the sinister voice echoed in their minds, a constant reminder that escape was not an option. Every creak of the floorboards, every rustle of the curtains sent shivers down their spines. The air was heavy with an oppressive tension, a feeling that malevolent eyes were fixed on them from unseen corners. The room that had initially offered refuge had now become a prison of fear. Sarah's gaze shifted to the window, her eyes locked onto the darkness beyond. Rain still tapped against the glass, the sound a morbid symphony to their plight. With each drop, her anxiety deepened, her thoughts spiraling into a frenzy of desperation. We can't stay here, she whispered to Mark, her voice quivering. He nodded, his face pale in the dim light. I know, but how do we get out? Our car won't start, and that thing out there... A cold realization washed over them. The old man, the voice, the inexplicable events. They were trapped in something far beyond their understanding. Whatever malevolent force resided within the motel had them ensnared, a pawn in a nightmarish game they couldn't comprehend. Hours stretched into an eternity, the night never ending. Their attempts to call for help went unanswered, their cell phones seemingly rendered useless by the sinister energy that clung to the place. Every time they approached the window, they were met with a wall of darkness that seemed impenetrable. As the first light of dawn began to filter through the curtains, they found themselves exhausted, their minds and bodies pushed to the brink. Mark's gaze met Sarah's, his eyes reflecting a mixture of fear and determination. We have to make a run for it, he said, his voice low but resolute. We can't stay here any longer. Sarah nodded a sense of urgency igniting within her. If they were going to survive, they needed to escape the clutches of the malevolent entity that had ensnared them. With their belongings in hand, they approached the door, their hearts pounding. As the door creaked open, the hallway beyond was shrouded in an eerie silence. They moved cautiously, step by step, the weight of the unknown pressing on them. The old man's office loomed ahead, its windows opaque, revealing nothing of what lay within. With trembling hands, they pushed open the door to the office. The room was empty, devoid of the old man who had denied them shelter. But the atmosphere was thick with a sense of foreboding, as if the very walls held the memories of the events that had unfolded there. Maybe we can find something in here, Mark suggested, his eyes scanning the cluttered room. Sarah nodded, her heart racing. She began rifling through the papers on the desk, searching for any clue that might help them understand the malevolent force that had trapped them. But the more she searched, 
the more the room seemed to close in around her, the shadows deepening. And then, she found it. A newspaper article tucked away among the papers. The headline sent a chill down her spine. Mysterious Disappearance of Motel Guests. The article detailed a series of events eerily similar to their own experience. The screams, the voices, the inexplicable horror that had befallen those who had stayed in this very motel. Mark, look at this, Sarah said, her voice trembling as she showed him the article. His eyes widened as he read the words. It's happened before. We're not the only ones. The realization was a gut punch, a confirmation that they were caught in a cycle of terror that had ensnared others before them. Their desperation grew, their determination to escape intensifying. Armed with the knowledge from the article, they returned to their room, their minds racing. They had to find a way to break the cycle, to overcome the malevolent force that held them captive. But as they paced the room, ideas remained elusive and time continued to slip away. As darkness fell once again, their fear deepened. The room felt smaller, the shadows longer, and the weight of their situation more suffocating. Sarah's gaze fixed on the window once more, her heart sinking as she saw movement in the darkness, a figure standing just beyond the glass, its eyes locked onto hers. Mark, she whispered, her voice barely audible. It's out there, watching us. He turned to the window, his own fear mirrored in his expression. The figure stood in the rain, its features obscured by shadows, but its malevolent intent was unmistakable. We have to do something, Mark said, his voice determined. We can't let it keep us here. With newfound resolve, they began searching the room, desperate for anything that might help them confront the entity that had trapped them. Their fingers brushed against the mirror hanging on the wall, a mirror that seemed out of place amidst the dim decor of the room. As they stared at their own reflections, an idea began to form. Perhaps the mirror held a clue, a connection to the malevolent force that haunted the motel. With a shared determination, they turned the mirror over, revealing a hidden compartment behind it. Inside the compartment, they found a small box. Sarah's hands trembled as she opened it, revealing a collection of old photographs and handwritten notes. The images were chilling. Families, couples, individuals, all with terrified expressions, their eyes haunted by an unseen horror. The notes detailed the experiences of those who had stayed in the motel. The screams, the voices, the unexplainable terrors that had befallen them. And among the notes, a single phrase was repeated, break the cycle. It's the key, Sarah said, her voice filled with a mixture of fear and determination. We have to break the cycle to escape. With the box in hand, they ventured out into the hallway once again, the malevolent presence still lingering in the air. They moved towards the old man's office, the sense of urgency growing with every step. Inside the office, they found a dusty ledger, a record of all the guests who had stayed in the motel. The names and dates stretched back decades, a chilling testament to the malevolent force's history of terror. With trembling hands, they began to tear out the pages of the ledger one by one. The act felt like a defiance, a rebellion against the cycle of horror that had ensnared so many before them. As the pages fell to the ground, a gust of wind seemed to rush through the room and the atmosphere shifted, until they realized that the shadowy figure was standing in the doorway. As their blood ran cold, Mark attempted to tiptoe back when he knocked down an old folder not he desk. A bunch of photos fell to the floor with the first photo they pick up being the old man, whose face would be revealed as the shadowy figure. The old man swung an ax at the couple a few times, each time barely missing the couple. Mark finally surprised the old man and smashed him over the head with old laptop that was sitting on the floor. The couple tied the old man and called the authorities from the office. It turns out this old man was the killer, and that room next door was reliving the horrors that transpired there. When the couple finally got back to their car, to their surprise, it started with no difficulty. Mark pushed the gas the pedal down with such force, the tires screeched as they pulled out of the motel. 
As they drove away, the motel appeared smaller and smaller in the distance, but the nightmare that transpired had grown bigger and bigger with each waking moment. 